Welcome to The Downsize Dish. My name is Lorraine Durham, and this is our platform where we talk to people who are on GLP-1 medications like Manjaro, Zepbound, Ozempic, Wagovi, and other GLP-1 medications. Today, we're talking to Madison. Madison is a fellow YouTuber, and she you can find her on YouTube at Madison Lothan and also on the web on, under her name as well. Welcome, Madison. How are you? Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. I love your podcast. Thank you. We love yours as well. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Madison. I'm a mom to a little girl, and things are quite busy in my house <laughs> already. I started my journey with compound appetite about five months ago. I really struggled to lose the baby weight after my last baby. I breastfed over a year. I do have mild heart failure, and so I'm under the care of a cardiologist. Okay. And it's extra bad to be overweight when you have heart disease. Sure. I'm not someone that before my pregnancies, really, I wasn't overweight before I had my pregnancies. And then after that last one, I also had a lot of PCOS symptoms. Mm -hmm. I went to a special doctor. They said, yes, we think you have PCOS. And all of that was just miserable as I'm sure you can imagine. So it's PCOS, yeah. the heart failure. I'm struggling with this like 30 pounds of extra weight that I just couldn't kick with diet and exercise, even though I was trying. I asked my cardiologist about Ozempic, mm -hmm. the one that, you know, you heard about the most. And he was like, yes, those could be super valuable for you. Um, but we don't, that's not something my clinic will handle. So I went to telehealth um, and... I've been doing compounders up uh five months now. I'm one of the hyper responders. So I've stayed on the 2.5 the whole time and consistently off weight. I hit my goal weight down 30 pounds at like month four. So the last month I've been doing micro dosing. So taking like half of the starting dose. Okay. I'm actually going to get off of it. I'm leaning off of it, doing like a really slow wean. My story is a little different than a lot of people on the medication. I don't have chronic obesity and I don't have diabetes. I had um, PCOS, a big flare up and everything. So just yeah. talk to my providers. It's something we're going to try to do with like with lifestyle changes. I'm with Coco. Now that's really interesting. I talked to another lady I interviewed um, named Susie oh. and she was a super responder on the 2.5 as well. So that's great that you were able to keep the dose um, small and keep going. I've heard some talk about how the trisepatide can help with heart disease. Yeah. Have you noticed any improvement on your... I have an go cardiogram scheduled for next month, so we'll see if it's improved. Um, okay. That research is definitely really exciting. My yeah. feels in so much healthier, but I've also lost 30 pounds. So I don't know if that's the medicine or I've lost 30 pounds, and of course I feel like way better. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's definitely something that went into consideration. Yeah. And with, I've also heard some talk about microdosing. Let's talk about that for a minute. The lowest dose of trisepatide, Manjaro, Zedbound is 2.5 milligrams. You're taking, you said half of that, like 1.25? Yeah. I have the compounds. So I like try to get them there. That's what I shoot for. Oh. Yeah. Okay. And you're doing that every two weeks? Every week. Every I know week. some people, when they're weaning off or they're weaning down, they go every other week with just the starting dose. Um, yeah. I don't really talk to my provider. I'm just going to do, still do every week, but just do the half dose every week. Okay. Still do feel appetite depression, and I actually still am losing a little bit. I like, I lose a couple ounces a week-ish. Okay. Right. Yeah. And you still feel the appetite suppression and- Yeah, that is my whole or the food noise is coming back. The first week I microdosed, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm thinking about food all the time again. I forgot how annoying this, but I am, I'm doing intermittent fasting. So that kind of helps having like an eating window and then not eating window. Yeah. And then also like I've changed my diet to before when I was trying to lose weight, I was only doing calorie deficits and it was great. Now I still watch my calories, but in my eating window, I try to really focus on the protein. Every time I eat a meal or a snack, it's very protein based. So okay. that can help with satiety, I feel. But who knows that come back? And I know it's going to keep coming back, especially when I'm all the way off of it. 
I'm really interested in your food noise because as someone who has not struggled with obesity, I, I find it interesting that you hear the food noise or you have heard the food noise. I was never obese or even really clinically overweight before I had my babies, but I always had to watch what I ate and I mm -hmm. always had to pull myself back. Yeah. And I was never someone that like naturally stopped. I was someone who was trying to be like, to, uh, to try to walk my figure. That's really interesting because I haven't heard of someone with that, I guess, point of view before. So you heard it, you knew it was there, but you were able to I mean, yes, read it in. Yeah, which I know not everyone is able to do. Yeah. Yeah, no. I, I, it does give me a little hope that maybe when I'm off the medicine, that like if I have these lifestyle changes, things will be different. Yeah, I hope so. And okay, so but I also want to talk about the intermittent fasting. Yeah. So how, what's your um, fasting time versus eating window? How many hours in each part? I try to do at least 14 hours, so 14 to 16 hours. So for me, mm -hmm. I have dinner at six. Then usually I'm eating breakfast around 9 a.m. So it's really not that bad. What I do is I just avoid the kitchen after dinner. So I close it up. And then if I, me and my husband are watching TV or something after the kids go to bed, we do it in our room. I'm like, yeah. And then I just don't even want to walk through it. Yeah, that's a great, that's a great plan. Once the kitchen is closed, like lights are off. Mornings are just busy, kids to preschool, get to work, answer my email first, or if it's a day I'm home, like I can go to the gym first and then eat. So Happy yeah. for me, having the like, eating window just like really helped. So you eat, you're still eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yeah. Okay. And you're uh, watching protein or counting. Do you count your protein grams? I do. For the first month or two on the meds, I have like my fitness pal I was doing it. And then now it's like... Mm -hmm. My head could not have a have it down. Yeah. Do you have the grams per day that you try to get I to? I do at least 80 grams. And then I try to stay under 1,600 calories if I can. But if I don't, not like the end of the world. So what? how tall are you, just for reference? Then? Five, seven. Okay. Tall. I used to be almost five, six, but I found I'm shrinking. So I probably am after the pregnancy. When you're an adult, no one like takes their height. Yeah. Know. Yeah. And and how old are your little girls? Two and four. Two and four. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, they're busy. You're busy. Do they, are snacks a problem? Like when you have to feed them? Yeah. So I, they have their snacks and I try to have my snack. And I yeah. was like during the day when I'm with them, I don't necessarily eat when they eat. So like their kids, of course, they get breakfast the second they wake up. And then sometimes, like, when they're still, then I'll make myself, like, eggs or something that yeah. you want to eat. And so if I'm eating more, like, 10 and 2, they're eating, like, normal kid time. They're eating at you know, 8 and noon. Yeah. Okay. And do you eat dinner all together as a family? We try to. Sometimes that's crazy. But yeah. We, yeah. Are you making two different dinners, or does everybody um, get the same dinner? Sometimes. My kids are picky, so it depends what the dinner is. But even I've got some hacks. So like that barilla, like lentil pasta or chickpea pasta. My kids will eat that. Oh, so, yeah. Well, oh, okay. We're going to have this from now on. Cause that's high protein, low carb, and like kids will eat it. So yeah. that then absolutely. But if um, I'm making like chicken breath, they will eat that. So I'm, I, yeah. Eat, I'll make them some curry veggie. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm, I'm gluten free. Okay. I only buy them. Gluteny mac and cheese. Because that was like a problem I didn't realize I was doing before, before I got on the medicine. Mm -hmm. Always eating like a second full plate of dinner. And then I would like mm -hmm. skim off what my kids didn't eat. It's so easy. So many extra calories. Realize like how many extra calories. Yeah. It's so easy when you're standing over that trash can or that sink just to. Yeah. But I have to remind myself I am not a trash can. <laughs> I don't need that. Yeah. Yeah. It uh, also it reminds me of, is it Jerry Seinfeld's wife who came up with that cookbook where you put like the brownies with vegetables in them to sneak them yeah. in? Do you have any recipe like okay. that? I do. I have a baby food maker, so I'll still puree like carrot or sweet potatoes or whatever and make it in, mix it in the mac and cheese. Or Perfect. Well, I'm to the mac. But 
loaded. Yeah, that's, not, that's awesome. ultimate. Though. If they eat it, and everyone's able to get smart and like figure it out and put them within. Yeah, you have to make sure. So, do you you talk about going to the gym? Tell us about your exercise routine. Yeah, the education I've received from being on this medicine has really helped me. So before I was power walking five days a week, so like on an incline, really just doing cardio. And I think it's because in high school, I took this weightlifting class and I gained 15 pounds a month. Well, and I got lifter of the year, beef of boys. And yeah, but I felt 15 pounds higher. And I was I, like, since then, I've been like scared of weightlifting. That's so important on a GLP-1 to be weightlifting so you don't lose muscle mass or whatever. So I was like, all right, we're going to get back in there. I'm going to do low weight, high rep. Love it. I love doing it once a week. And then I always have done Pilates here and there, but I've been doing Pilates once a week. I follow the YouTube channel Move with Nicole. I do one of her videos a week. So I'm doing strength training twice a week. And then the other days of the week, every day that I can, I do walk. Okay, well, that's awesome. That's amazing that you were able to gain, gain pounds of muscle. I know. If you listen to my brothers, they're beef. They're like super, I think it's like genetic. But so I'm like, I'm going to lift weights, but I'm going to do low weight high rep because I, knowing that I genetically am prone getting like power woman. Do you have, I think my microphone is echoing a little bit. Do you have a scale that measures your muscle mass? I don't. I would love to. Yeah. Yeah. I need to get one of those. Christopher and I have one that you step on it and it runs an electric current through your body, but you don't feel. And it just tells your muscle mass. You can see your weight in muscle and pounds and your body fat percent and stuff like that. So I've noticed as I lost weight, I also lost some muscle. And I've been exercising really the whole time, but I almost lost, I've lost almost 60 pounds and it's a good part of that is is muscle loss. I was just wondering if you to maintain your muscle mass or if you had any issues with that. Yeah, I'm not sure that's not something I was measuring, but I, from what I understand that a little bit of that is pretty inevitable. The high protein diet and the strength training, we do what we can. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay. Did you have any side effects? You were on such a small dose. Yeah, I do. do there's Q through four out of the week. I have just like a little bit of nausea, not really since I've been microdosing, but did Q through four, I get a little nausea, I get a little fatigue, that's really the main one. Sometimes a little tummy feels funny, but that is another reason to plan on fully getting off of it, just yeah. to feel 100%. Where it goes. You've been on three months, I think you said, was your weight loss time three months? My, yeah, strategic weight loss for therapeutic weight loss was four months, and then since okay. And the maintenance. So I'm interested to see if as your it's such a small dose, I wonder if your side effects will stop at some point. For me, I noticed that the side effects were worse in the first six months I was on it. I, I've been on since September. And now I'm to the point where, and I've been dropping down a dose, so now I'm to the point where I don't feel really don't feel any side effects, but I'm still on 7.5. I'm wondering if with the microdosing, you can get to a point where you just don't. I've yeah, heard out there, really since I have microdose, I hardly noticed the side effects. They're pretty mild. Okay. okay. And another question that comes to mind. So you're on the compounded trisepatide. Yes. So you have the vial. And a lot of people talk about 28 day window from the time the vial is punctured to finishing the medicine. Do you find your vials last you longer than 28 days? Do you go beyond that? Yeah, they definitely do. And they feel just as strong. You've been really till they're gone. Okay. Then I have okay. a little. Okay. So that's good to know. And when you order from your provider, do you, how do you order for the microdote? You just tell them you're on 2.5 and they mix it. Yeah. yeah, they just send me the 2.5. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Let's see. Do you have any uh, tips or things you wish you knew before you started the medication? Yeah. I would say just the high protein diet is really important. Electrolyte drinks can make you feel better. If 
having a lot of fatigue, definitely take a multivitamin, protein, supplements are just fine. If you're having one of those days where you just feel like you need anything, you can yeah. def- have protein drinks or bars. Uh, definitely incorporate strength training. You'll probably love it. If you're worried about bulk, uh, just do low weight, high rep. That'll be fine. Or Pilates, that'll be fine. Definitely also make lifestyle changes that you feel like can last you. So for me, the intermittent fasting, I'm like, oh, this is something that can last me. This is not like a quick fix. Like this is something yeah. I can keep doing. Yeah. So the intermittent fasting, it's interesting because basically you're not eating after dinner. Yeah. And then delaying flour. Delaying breakfast. When you wake up, are you hungry when you wake up? Are you, are you hungry for breakfast? Could you flip it? Yeah, I wasn't until it started microdosing, and now I am. And I just do a full glass of water, a cup of black coffee, whatever tasks I needed to do that morning. And then if it's, if I can make it till 10 or 11, I do. If I'm like starving and it's 9 a.m., then I'll eat. Yeah. And what are some things, what are your go-to breakfasts that you like to have? I love a hot breakfast. So like eggs scrambled with cottage cheese or over some sourdough toast. I make my own gluten-free sourdough so mm-hmm. Very good. Yeah. Or breakfast sausage. If like I'm on the go, a protein bar and. So talk about, let's talk about the gluten a little bit. Are you allergic to, or are you just avoid? Yeah. In an odd situation, I would yeah. die and years ago, I would get like GI issues and rashes. And that it's been 10 years. Yeah. Do you find any protein supplements have gluten in them that you need to avoid? Is that- yeah, I definitely am a label reader or look for ones that actually say gluten free. Oh, okay. Okay. And I, you did, haven't said anything about being a vegetarian. So you still eat or eat? Yeah, yeah I think you eat. They, like my diet before being on the medication naturally was a little lower in me. And then now that I have such a protein emphasis, yeah. that's something that I'm eating more of. But I think it's good. I think I was just like, I'm someone who loved carbs. So I would eat a bagel and cream cheese for breakfast, and then uh, like a few pizza for dinner. Like that wasn't crazy to me or anything. But really, like, personally, that Yeah, it's a, yeah, I, I, I love carbs. I'm a carb yeah. addict. I'm a- I would eat them all day, every day, only that. Um, but yeah, I definitely oh. had to shift away from that. Especially when I was pregnant and breastfeeding, that's like what I was just craving all the time. Yeah. Did you gain a lot of weight with your pregnancies? So with my, I've had extreme morning fitness, both. Uh, with my first one, I did not so throwing up all the time. With the mm-hmm. second one, I did because eating made me feel better and I actually put down more. So I gained a bunch of weight and then also breastfeeding cravings, like you're just starving all the time sometimes yeah i think you said you breastfed for a year with yeah i did eight months yeah i had a a very long like five years of childbearing that left my body feeling really icky like yeah those kids say they know the first one i was like i'm looking at myself in the mirror like not because i was also having pcos so like sick to acne and like 30 pounds heavy like i was just like this is not great yeah, no, that's definitely no fun. I had my girls close together too. I think they're about two years apart. I think similar to yours, and it, yeah, it just seemed forever. I was either pregnant or being in the, had an infant, in the or I think we the day that we got to stop buying Pampers, it was like oh, I know we're probably sick <laughs> right now, actually. Yeah, it's uh, so. Did you do anything for the acne? Your skin looks great. Yeah, the, I did. I was on the pill with, to try to help with all this and it wasn't working yeah. out. So, um, with my OB, we got me an IUD. And then I also, right when I got my IUD, is when I started trisepatide. Okay. And so I started losing weight instantly. So, my body being so much healthier from probably both of those things cleaner diet, all of it. Yeah, that really happened cleared up a lot. Really, all my PCOS and stuff dramatically. Did you ever use anything like metformin or anything for PCOS? No. My cardiologist does have me on Jardiant, though, which is a different oh. diabetic drug, which may be why I was such a hyper-responder. It probably hasn't been studied yet, but I, I do wonder. If those... Now, Jardiant is a pill. It's a pill. It's a diabetic drug that's also used for heart failure, and so that's why I'm on it. I've been on it. 
And is Stardance a GLP one? No, it's yeah. not. Okay. The I, regular blood sir. I can hear the jingle in my head. I take one sweet week. Yeah, the lady's like dancing around. That's mm -hmm. good. Okay. Yeah, that's really interesting. It's great that you're a super responder. That's, I've, you're, yeah. I don't want to. I'm glad I didn't try to fight them anymore. Yeah, that's awesome. Do you, do you have any, do you drink a lot of water? How much water are you drinking? Every yeah, I've always been a big water drinker and dry dance actually makes me thirsty. So that's cool. Okay. Cool. That's the kind of community people like forget to drink. Yeah. Definitely well for a glass a day. I did wait when I was a few months before getting onto a step inside. I always had like creamer in my coffee, but then I was like, no sugar. Oh. So, but that was not, that was not a bad push actually. I really like black coffee again. So really only drink water and black coffee. Maybe a little wine. Sure. I love the wine myself. Yeah. I had another question in my head, and now it went out. It was before the wall. Oh, electrolytes. You mentioned electrolytes. Yeah. Earlier. At the beginning of my journey with Terzepatide, I just yeah. did, like, wheat, even mm -hmm. though I could back to the eat lunch or whatever. And uh, having an electrolyte drink, I'd be like, oh, got it back. That might be the blood sugar cream. Yeah, interesting. Is there a particular kind that you like? I've seen a lot of ones out there, and I don't the, um, I don't know. I have have a few different they have like the mercury free but that like sugar free liquid IV is good yeah sugar free definitely mm -hmm. definitely the way to go yeah i've just started with the electrolytes and i feel like it's given me more energy i don't more up your step yeah i don't know if that's just mentally or if it act but that's well make sense if we're eating so much less so we have less electrolytes in our diet yeah we need a skin yeah it does it makes a lot of sense Anything else you want to tell us about or comment on? I don't know. I'm really grateful for this medication, for my health journey to be at the time in history where we have these, and specifically that we have the compound. I'm someone my insurance won't cover it at all. Yeah. And so what a blessing that the compounds were available for me, because if my POS and hormones and everything would have flared up five years ago, then... I don't want to harm this amazing opportunity to do like medical weight loss. It's just been such yeah. a blessing. In just five months, my body feels so much incredibly healthier. And I'm glad that it wasn't going to just keep getting worse. Like I was able to get some medical intervention. Yeah, that's awesome. I wonder if at some point you might be covered because of your cardiac. Yes. And I did talk to my provider about that, but my BMI is no longer unhealthy. Oh. And I know what well, movie to just make it past for heart failure or heart disease and everything. Yeah. But I may have missed the vote on that. Well, yeah. I'm glad that you were able to to get the compound. We're on compound over here, too. Mm -hmm. um, I've done the compound the whole time. Christopher's done. He started with Manjaro, went to Zed Bound due to shortages. And then we went back to compounded just because it's just easier to get we couldn't we couldn't find did you have a problem finding uh no you didn't because you only did the I did my insurance or, or this frustrates my insurance like sent out a letter that was like we were covering no weight loss nothing but like yeah but not even yeah. yeah art has the same i tried to do the i tried emailing them calling them and they're like yeah. nope that you're not covered for any weight loss drugs i'm like yeah okay, great yeah hopefully at some point Insurance companies might come around. Maybe when there's like true generic, that might make a difference. Yeah. Here's some now. Tell us about your blog and your website and give a plug for that so people can go yeah. and check that out. I have content on my blog, on my YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. And I just started motherhood and journey, early motherhood should be some of my breast hunt videos blew up here on YouTube. And then a few months ago, I got brave and started posting about my weight loss journey. And so now those videos are out there and it's developing a community. I wasn't sure when I started if I was going to post about it, honestly. Yeah. And then one month in, it just changed my life for, much for the better. I was like almost getting tears when I stepped on the scale. I was like, you know what? I'm going to post about this. It's pretty cool. And then, well, I've actually been pretty supportive. Every once in a while, there's a mean comment or two. For the most part, people are quite nice. <clears throat> Quite encouraging. Yeah, same over here. We started taking it. And we're like, 
wow, these are amazing. We want to yeah. tell people about them. And every once in a while, you do get the pe person that says, you just need to diet and exercise. And I'm like, You're right. I've been doing that right. my whole life. Yeah, okay. And it only goes, it only works so far. And I, I really think that pregnant, and I don't know if, how you feel about this, but I really think pregnancy changes your body, changes the way your body processes things. I spent a whole year trying to lose weight and trying to get healthier with diet and exercise, and I just couldn't. And I was having crazy irregular periods. I was having cystic acne. I was having other just hormonal symptoms. And the doctor was like, yes, you have PCOS. So... Even though I was trying to do all these things right, it just wasn't, it wasn't happening. And then with my heart condition, it's extra bad to be overweight. Yeah. I, I was like, wait until it keeps getting worse and worse, but I can seek medical intervention now. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad you found it and you saw it and you lost your weight. That's awesome. So congratulations on your weight loss and your blog is, I see you all over the place on YouTube. So thank you for coming on today. It was great. If you, if anyone out there would like to be on the Downsize Dish, send me an email to ldurham at folio28.com. And that's it for today. Thank you to Madison. Again, you can find her on YouTube and TikTok and on the web. She's everywhere. Great for us moms out there that maybe want to find a point of view uh, on motherhood and raising those babies. Thank you, Madison, for coming on today. And thank you. You're welcome. And thanks for watching. This has been Lorraine Durham for The Downsized.